Welcome to the next era of humankind. That's all I have to say to start off this episode. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching the RoboTaxi event in depth next on Now You Know. All right, so let's talk about the uh, the things that were revealed. Let's not let's not beat around the bush here. Let's let's d- jump right into it. First and foremost, Robo Taxi. Yeah, two seater. Two seater. Cyber cab. Cyber cab. Was it made of stainless steel? It's got curves. So did they like lighten up the stainless steel, or is it just painted? I, Comment down below. I, I think it's not stainless steel. If they're going to keep it under $30,000, which is what Elon said, hmm. I think they're going to have to ditch the stainless steel. Although it would be great to have it, wouldn't it, for dents and for not having to paint it. True. So I could go either way. But I just don't know if you can mold it like it was molded. It doesn't. Nece- it wouldn't necessarily have to be the same stainless steel that's on the Cybertruck. Thinner. It could be a more, like, you know, a refrigerator mm-hmm. has the rounded stainless then steel. Then you don't get the whole dent proof stuff. No, I don't know. You're absolutely Let right. us know down below what you think. It looks stainless steel, but that could have just been paint. Then are we going to talk about the Robo Van? The Robo Van? The, the... the Robo Van? <laughs> what does he called it? Uh, Elon called it the Robo Robovan. I think that was the biggest surprise of the night. We had gotten wind of it from a few stock analysts who couldn't keep their mouths shut. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, the fact that it, I thought it would only be like eight people that it could hold. How many did it say? Uh, 20. Plus cargo? Plus, uh, or or goods it could it could also hold goods so it's kind oh, of I see like it could a, be like an Amazon van it's like or a box van so when for all these people who are like why doesn't uh, Tesla make a box van they do they make a Robovan they, they're gonna make a Robovan <laughs> so transporting 20 people the use cases of that would be tunnels tunnels is gonna be the biggest one we recently did a story about College Station Texas which has 73,000 students and they're gonna do tunnels at College Station. Although right now, boring tunnels are only nine feet in diameter, and I don't know if that would fit in a typical boring tunnel now. I think that this would be the only way that you would be able to, because we got so much pushback, people are like, that's, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard because there's no one be able to fit enough people. And when you have a Robovan, a Robovan, <laughs> why did he have to say, <laughs> just call it a Robovan? Most people, it goes right over their heads. A Robovan. If a if a robo van is basically a little, I mean, imagine you go to a subway, mm-hmm. like a subway station, not right. not the restaurant, and there's just constantly a new train pulling in every ten seconds. Yeah. Instead of having to like wait for the train to come and then stop, and then the door is open, and then they have to wait a while. What if you were already kind of ass- assembled in packets of people, and you're just getting on, getting off? I mean, he said the main reason it sounded like is that it's even cheaper. So let's get into price here. Mm. So uh, you wouldn't own a robo van, I don't think mm-hmm. that he didn't mention that. But if you're True. in a in a cyber cab, which by the way he says they'll sell to you, so below thirty thousand uh, dollars, they he said hopefully sound a little less than optimistic, but twenty twenty six he said they would start production. Then you. You could buy it for thirty thousand dollars. The cost to you would be less than twenty cents a mile, he said, and the cost to renting it out or riding in it would be thirty to forty cents a mile. But then when he talked about the Robovan, he said it would be five to ten cents per mile cost. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he meant cost to use the rider or cost to the operator. Hmm. That's a good it's a good question. It's down. Pretty cheap. That's it getting very, very that is cheap. Very, very cheap. Yeah. So then last but certainly not least was Optimus. Last. <laughs> so much. There is so much. Uh then uh he talked about Optimus. Yeah. They had a whole bunch of Optimuses kind of walk out. Very sci fi looking scene. Yeah. Um we were debating whether all of them were really autonomously doing their thing or whether there were people behind the scenes in um you know suits i'm going to predict that by the time this actually comes out that we might actually know the answer and so please spare me the oh why didn't you know because we're recording this literally five minutes after the whole thing finished and we're editing it and getting it up to you as soon as possible now the robots if they're fully autonomous Holy crap. Yeah, no, I think they are. I mean, if you see the improvements they've already made, uh, you know, I don't think a lot of us pay too much attention to the details on them, but they already now had the actuators in the in the forearm, mm-hmm. which is a huge change from the earlier version. I mean, just in terms of fluidity. Yeah. Um, here's what we're, we were con- debating about, whether or not these robo... Optimi. Optimi, if they were 
acting fully autonomously or if they were being puppeteered um, by somebody somewhere else. And the way that I think that you would do that would be that you'd have someone with like a VR headset and the hands and you would be able to kind of do this in real life and then the robot would puppet you and you'd be able to see in the VR headset what the robot saw. It seemed autonomous to me. I don't know. I, I'm going to push back against like whether it was controlled by someone else. It looked like it was autonomous. Now, I know that it had fluid human motion, but that's because a lot of the training was humans training it. Right. And that's the thing that freaks me out. The well, that doesn't freak me out. But that's where it's like just because it's not currently being controlled by a person doesn't mean that it's not taking all that data of a person. It just the thing that really made me feel that way is that. They were constantly doing things with their arms that if you told me, hey, you're a robot, I would constantly be doing things. I don't think it matters because this isn't what you're going to be getting in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And what I think matters is that Elon says the goal for the robot would be that you be able to buy one when they get to full scale production Mm -hmm. for thirty thousand dollars or less than a car. Yep. And. At that price, they're going to be selling like hotcakes and yep. Elon knows it. And he even kind of hinted the fact that everyone on Earth would have one, at least one. So this would be like the biggest change to humankind. We've talked about this on the show many times. This would change human labor. It would change the economy. He basically said that it would be the age of abundance and it would be something special because the cost of goods and services will decline dramatically. Anyone will be able to have any products and services they, they want. It will be an age of abundance the likes of which people have not, almost no one has envisioned. It'll be something special. And I just think that we have we have not spent any time thinking about that as a society of what is going to happen when what we just saw at this party is happening in real life, where mm-hmm. there's robots taking care of your family, doing jobs. Like, the future is finally here. Yeah. I want to take a moment to toot our own horn. Back in, what was it, 2017, 2018, you wrote a, The Autonomous Driving Future. Yeah. And your first episode was on parking lots. And that's something that uh, Elon actually brought up, yeah. showed examples where he thought, um, basically, you're going to have a city that's normally full of parking lots and parking garages. And he's like, you're going to be able to get rid of those. I like what he said. You're, you're taking the ing lots out of parking lots and you're turning those places into parks. Now, they don't necessarily have to be parks, but it's a nice way to kind of picture the space that you're getting back is yeah. by taking a city, which is normally very concrete jungle, and turning it into more of a jungle. Uh, I think that that was a really great visual to show how much space in a city is going to could potentially be converted back into usable space and not just the space that we have to park our, you know, two or three ton. Totally. It's going to change everything because look, this whole last century was about the car. And so we all got accustomed to that. The car took precedence over everything, even over us humans. Right. And so your only space in life was the sidewalk. Now it's going to be the age of humans again, because the, these cyber cabs are going to be just on the roads and they won't need parking lots. And I think that the thing is, we're going to get so much time back. Um, Elon kind of talked about that a little bit, but I want to go I want to go a little bit deeper into it. Well, what he <laughs> didn't talk about and will happen, maybe he didn't want to get into it, but there will be no traffic. Mm. So this whole thing about cutting across L.A. and taking three hours, it won't take three hours anymore. So you'll get that time back, which you didn't really talk about. Sure. He just meant you'll get the time that you would be traveling instead of having to pay attention to the road. You'll be able to play games or watch a movie. But it also does mean that if you do want to drive somewhere that's three hours away, it's no longer a three hour drive. Right. It's a three hour ride where you're we've never had where you can the, sleep. You've never ever ever been able to experience this and i know you're going like what a a train or a plane or a taxi uh no because you're going to be the only person in that car true i don't know of too many i mean maybe if we're getting into like in the olden days of trains where you could close a door and you were in your own compartment and you were very very rich so you had your own compartment and it wasn't with a bunch of other people that is the closest thing that we've had to that sort of travel yeah. i'm trying to think boats yeah it's like being on a cruise i guess yeah i, I just want to talk quickly about the kind of aws aspect to this so basically the car has a robot on wheels you're only going to be using it even if you use it for 100 hours a week as opposed to the 10 that you're using it now that still leaves 68 hours a week for the car to be used just for its computer mm. and elon was saying they're going to be able to do distributed inference computing like aws which is in a whole other form of income 
I mean, AWS is bigger than Amazon where you buy the stuff, mm. right? Um, that's where they make a lot of their money. So this is just another, as a Tesla shareholder, is exciting to hear. And then lastly, I think, is something that are just Easter eggs here, but are going to turn out, I think, maybe on the earnings call coming up mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks or maybe later down the road, inductive charging mm -hmm. and cleaning. So many people said, well, you can't have a RoboCab because people are going to make it dirty. And he just showed you, didn't really talk about it, but showed this amazing looking robot thing that could polish and vacuum. And so it looks like they've been thinking about that. A couple of other key designs were that um, a robot arm would come in and take out the cup holders, mm -hmm. which if you've been in a car before, are always the grungiest, most disgusting parts of that car or the cup holders. And presumably it can go put it in like a dishwasher and then you can get, imagine if you could take your cup holders out of your, I mean, most people get inserts to put in their cup holders. So that way when it gets disgusting, you can take it out and either throw it away or clean it very, very deeply instead of having it sit there. Well, and so many of the problems that people brought up about charging and cleaning, well, first of all, inductive takes care of the charging and this robot takes care of the cleaning, but you have Optimus. So all those things that you thought, well, I'd have to go to human to clean it. No, Optimus will do it. Well, and also Elon talked about how there is a class of people right now whose whole livelihood depends on vehicles, Uber drivers. And what he said was that you could have one Uber driver today operate a flock, as he put it, of, what did he say, 10 to 20 to 30 yeah. robots. Well, and let's talk about that. So he said that basically starting next year, he said, this is Elon time, starting in Texas and California, those would be the first two states. Now, I don't know why if he just said those off the cuff or if they have some special arrangement with certain cities. If it's Texas, I'm thinking Austin because they already have crews in Austin. If it's California, I'm thinking San Francisco and LA because they already have crews mm -hmm. there. So those are probably the first three cities that would have this. Um, and then it will spread to other cities that allow it. And this would just be for the sexy lineup plus Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. Won't be for Robotaxi yet because it won't be out yet. So anyone, it pr presumably, mm -hmm. with one of those cars would be able to start renting it out. The one thing that we were missing about the robo taxi was how much full self driving was going to cost on it. So, is it thirty thousand dollars plus full self driving, and is that full self driving going to be going up in price when the car can actually full self drive? Who knows? Maybe it'll, he'll keep the monthly subscription. Maybe he'll make a daily subscription. Who knows? We just—I mean, because it's in Tesla's best interest to have it, right? So maybe for the maybe you know. I'm thinking you got to get people in it. So maybe he'll do some free months or something to get people to start trying it. And, and then once you've heard that your buddy is making like, wait, you just, you're sleeping all day and you made money, you're going to want it too. Yeah, this is going to be huge. This is a huge shift in the way that we currently think about making money. It brings up a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I My guess would be that in the first few cities like Austin and San Francisco and LA, if, the, if those indeed are the cities, that at some superchargers, they would start to roll out the induction charging and the cleaning robots mm. so that your car would be able to charge and get cleaned there. And maybe either Tesla would charge you for that or maybe it would be free for the first something, whatever, like who knows? It seems like it would be cheaper for Tesla to have you, the owner of the car, worry about it. And I know that a lot of people would be like, well, then I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you don't have to, buddy. Uh, somebody else who wants to make money will do it. I think it would be smart in the beginning for them to worry about it, um, for Tesla to worry about I it. I agree. Because when you make this giant change, like you did from horses to cars, it's pretty good to have the customer be taken care of in the beginning. Because mm -hmm. if you just one day dropped cars on the world when they were horses the day before, then everyone's like, I don't even know how this thing works, let alone put sure. gas in it and stuff. So I feel like that there will be superchargers where they take care of some of this stuff and then it'll take off from there as yeah. soon as you get your Optimus robot. Exactly. Um, can I just ask you, I saw the doors. Let's talk about the doors for a second yeah. on the Cybercab. So what do you call these doors? Uh, they're not Falcon Wing like on a Model X where they have two hinges. Um, I think they're butterfly doors. Okay, so the only thing I surprised that he did that. I know that it's eye catching and I know it's simpler than Falcon Wing, but they take up a lot of space when they open. Is that going to be a problem? It's never going to be in a parking space. True. It's never, it's never going to be in a parking space. It might be, it might be, it might be, but I don't think that it will be. It's going to be able to pull out and you're going to be able to get in and having butterfly doors is so 
f***ing smart because you are going to feel like a king coming out of that car hmm. and everyone around you is going to go, oh my gosh, what is that? What is that? You can take any car in the world, any car in the world. You can take a, a beat up uh, Nissan Altima. If you put butterfly doors on it, all of a sudden it's going to attract attention. Now people will still go, oh, that's a Nissan Altima. But if you just get out of the car and then the, everyone's looking at it and then the doors close and you went, there's only two seats in that car and two people just got out of the car and I don't see anyone in that car and it's driving away. What's going on? Tesla has always been really good at actually hacking people's like limbic systems, mm. the actual like dumb part of your brain, the, the lizard part. This is exactly what they're going to do. The Cybertruck does it where people go, what the heck is that? And I and I attract my attention to it, but it doesn't tell you anything, right? People see the Cybertruck and it doesn't it, it doesn't explain itself at all. This robo taxi with the butterfly doors is going to explain the entire system to people because it's going to catch their attention. They're going to see people either get in or get out and they're going to see the, the thing drive away and they're going to realize that that thing is autonomous within one or two sightings of it. And that is going to blow their mind because they haven't seen stuff like that. Before. Now, for those of you who are, who are like, wait a minute, it only has two seats. That's a problem. I do want to point out that as ARK Invest pointed out this week, that 90% of rides in Ubers are one or two people. Yep. Now, if you take the driver out, you don't need the third seat. So True. the two seats will take care of 90% of rides. And I think that's where um, Tesla's being very smart. They're like, okay, we're not going to solve it for every single, you know, large family or whatever, but that you you go in a Cybertruck or in a robo. They sell the Cybertruck. They sell the Model 3, the Model Y. Right. Now, the question that I have is how do you do full self-driving in, say, a Model Y, which doesn't have steer by wire, meaning that the steering wheel is connected a really good to question. the actual steering? Do you have to tell people, don't grab the steering wheel and crash into a tree, which I guess you you do in a normal car. You say, please don't crash this into a tree. Is it possible that you would put some kind of cowling over the driver's seat so that the passengers don't sit in it and you lose that seat? My thought would be that the steering wheel... Like right now, if you're in autopilot in a Model Y or full self-driving and you pull the steering wheel, it, it gives you a little bit of resistance and then it kind of pops out and it goes boom, boom and now you're driving. What if it didn't release the wheel? What if it was actually really hard to move the wheel? What if it did release and it just didn't do anything? Well, it can't because oh, right it can now the cyber it's, truck, but it, it can't, can't cyber truck, but it, it can't the Model Y. Mm. So maybe it would just try and overpower you and beep at you and yell at you or maybe it's strong enough to basically not relinquish control or it would just stop or it would you right. know or it would say you have taken control is there an emergency right and you'd say oh i'm just, just my coffee yeah you know, i don't know right I don't know. These are so many questions that are going to come up. <laughs> anyway, super exciting. I want to hear your questions and thoughts down below in the comments. We're obviously going to be covering this on Tesla Time News, but we wanted to get you our thoughts as quickly as possible because it was a little bit chaotic there with the party and everything. It was hard to tell what was going on. Elon's comments weren't always lined up with what you were seeing on screen. So um, I don't know. This is really exciting because it's everything we've been saying was going to happen for years. And for the longest time, people are like, you're crazy. That is never going to happen. Right. We still might be crazy and it still might never happen. But it's very it seems much more likely now. Yeah. I mean, I think that we were always waiting for this day to come where Tesla was going to fully kind of explain uh, themselves. Uh, well, and lastly, can I just point out that Elon was excited. He was giddy to tell you about this future. And I think that's because it's all coming together now. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the robots are walking around. The cars are driving around. Everything's happening. This isn't just on paper. This isn't CGI. This is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And I think he knows it. And I think we all in this tesla world know it too yeah well thank you so much for joining us again we'll see you on tuesday this week you know stay don't change that dial <laughs> um or just hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so that way um you will get tesla time news on tuesday hopefully we're gonna have some more news maybe we're gonna find out whether those robots are fully autonomous or not or if those cars were fully autonomous or not who knows yeah who knows what the news will bring so we'll see you then now you know